Welcome back once again to the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast. I'm your host, evangelist Mike McCurry, and on behalf of our entire team here at BTI, I'm so very thankful for the opportunity to speak to you today, and the fact that you would be a part of our listening audience is such a great blessing. Now, what does BTI stand for? Well, it's Bible Tracks Incorporated. It's a ministry that's been around for over 80 years. And now, as I stand at the helm of BTI, an 80-year-old ministry with such a grand legacy of providing the Word of God to all the world free of charge, this ministry began with evangelist Paul Levine in 1938. And for these intervening 80-plus years, God has allowed us to continue to supply Christian workers just like you with the gospel tools they need. You can find those gospel tracts at BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, it is our great privilege and honor to offer those free tools to you at no charge. Of course, if God does lead you to partner with our ministry and support us as a missions work, a ministry spreading the gospel in countries like India and Pakistan and England, of course, all over America, Uganda, Mexico, the Philippines, literally 170 plus countries. If God does lay that upon your heart, we would love for you to partner with us that way. You can visit again our website, BibleTracksInc.org. You'll find that donate tab in the top right hand corner. It would be such a joy for you to be a part of our BTI team. What I'd like for you to do now is to find your Bible. We are going to pick up where we left off last week in the book of 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17, we are discussing this point, this thought, this theme, that something is missing. You see, friend, as we look around at our world... Look around at our country, our communities, our states, our townships, villages, our churches even. And really, and most saddening of all, when we look in the mirror, we realize, and it's not hard to figure out, that something is missing. Our world seems to be coming down around our ears. It's coming apart at the seams, and there's something you and I can do about it. If you truly desire to make an impact for the cause of Christ, I believe the key can be found and the lesson can be learned from 1 Kings 17. It's been on my heart and a burning inside of me that I look forward to continuing to share this week, 1 Kings 17. Before we do that, though, let me make mention once again, if you have a prayer request or if God has laid a special burden on your heart that you'd like to share with me, I would love to hear that. Now, if it's of a private nature, we will not mention it on the radio, of course, but if you have a prayer request that you'd like to share that I can be a prayer partner with you about, please feel free to text me 309-316-7240, 309-316-7240. Now, let's turn our attention to the book of 1 Kings in the Old Testament, chapter number 17. Join me there if you would. By way of review, let's read verse number one. Ready, begin. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And, verse number two begins with that three-letter word, and. After that word, those next five words are key. The word of The Lord. Say that with me if you would. Ready? Begin. The word of the Lord. You see, friend, in our time and really throughout history, people have allowed something to be missing from their lives. And the key, I believe, the missing element that can solve all of the world's ills, the sickness of sin that plagues our world, can only be rectified by the word of the Lord. If you would allow me, let's begin this week as well with a word of prayer on this precept, on this principle from God's word. Let's pray. Father, thank you so very much again for this grand chance, opportunity, and privilege to speak to these, your people. I am so very happy to be able to spend these next few moments with them. But God, I ask that everything that I say on this program throughout the week, that it would be a blessing and nothing but that. Give me the exact right words to say. 
sharpen my speech today on the broadcast and give open ears and soft hearts to our listeners. In Jesus' name, amen. You see here in 1 Kings 17, we are introduced to this man named Elijah. Elijah bursts onto the scene, enters stage right. Elijah comes onto the scene in a dark and dreary time. Wickedness was the theme of the day. Omri, the previous king of Israel, the Bible says in 1 Kings 16, verse number 25, that he did exceedingly evil above and beyond all that came before him. The Bible then continues in verse number 30 of chapter 16 that Ahab, Omri's son, took after his father and was also an incredibly wicked king, an incredibly wicked man, above all that came before him. You see, friend, our ability, our circumstances, our time of life does not equate to an inability to serve God. Here's what I mean by that. Regardless of what's going on around you, God still has a mandate. God's word is still in effect. And Elijah understood that. And that's why Elijah did not shy away from proclaiming God's word or the word of the Lord, that missing substance, the missing element. Let's see here in verse number one. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, 1 Kings 17, 1, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Let's very quickly review. In a broken, a despondent, a distracted, depressed world, God always begins with a devoted workman. Enter stage right, Elijah. Elijah follows God's leading into the throne room of Ahab. He says his peace and he storms right out because God told him and gave him a message. He disseminated and proclaimed the message and he did not elaborate. He did not go beyond what God wanted him to say. We do, I do a very good job sometimes to my own shame of saying more or less than God would have me to say. To try to make a message more palatable to the audience. Friend, a message of drought to the king Ahab was not very palatable, but Elijah gave it anyway. He then is led of God, verse number two through the next few verses. He is led to the brook Cherith, where he is fed by ravens. But the brook does not stay wet. And just in time, in verse number 8, the word of the Lord came unto him again, saying, Arise, get thee, get thee to Zarephath. God leads a Elijah out of that area of the brook Cherith and leads him towards Zarephath, which was not a native Jewish area, and yet he still followed. You could make the case that Elijah was the very first missionary to a Gentile people because the widow of Zarephath that we're about to meet was not a Jewish lady. So you could say he was the very first missionary, but regardless, Elijah followed God's leading. And then in verse number 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on, we meet this widow woman. Behold, a destitute woman. She was in a bad way. She had just enough food for one last small meal for her and her son. And then right on time, Elijah comes onto the scene and he has a bold proclamation of the word of the Lord. And he says, lady, woman, feed me first. And after you and your son will have no want for food. And what happens? A miracle occurs. And in verse number 15, she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal, verse 16, wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And that brings us to where we are right now. All of that review, we kind of encapsulated everything we covered for the last five days in that few minutes. Now let's continue on. Verse number 17. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. Now, I'd like you to pay special attention to the circumstances surrounding this woman before we observe her response to this sad occurrence of her son, her only son, the one thing she held most precious in life, dying before her eyes. Let's look at the circumstances. For the last couple of weeks, months or so, she has been eating literal miracle food given to her by the man of God through the word of God, a miracle of God. 
And she has been able to share her table and her son with Elijah. Imagine with me what those meal times must have looked like. The dinner as the sun sets on the horizon. And once again, she uncorks the cruise of oil and the, and the barrel of meal. And she pours out just enough, wouldn't you know it, for just one more dinner. With the knowledge that God promised until rain comes back on the earth and the famine, the drought is over, she will have a continual amount of food. Imagine what those mealtimes must have been like, being regaled with tales by Elijah about being fed by literal ravens by the brook Cherith, about his stories of storming into the throne room of Ahab and what that was like and what he was feeling like and her son asking, tell me about that one more time. But today, all of that is forgotten because her son is dead. The good things of the past, the miracles that uh, that preceded this moment, seem to have escaped her knowledge. In verse number 18, what does she say? And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? Well, the first thought I have is this. That seems like a foolish and a faithless charge by this woman. That's a very harsh accusation. Consider with me, if you would, logically the fact that her son and her would not be alive at this moment some weeks or months after Elijah and her first meeting. And now, without the miracle of God, they would not be alive. And now she's going to confront the man of God and shake her finger in his face and say, Did you come here to kill my son? That seems foolish. That seems faithless. But friend, can I tell you? Number one, that's just the beginning of this part of the story. God does a miraculous work. You may be wondering and thinking and already knowing what it is, but don't let the cat out of the bag too quickly. But tomorrow on the broadcast, Lord willing, I'm going to explain exactly why this response by the woman makes complete and total sense. Why she was not out of line. Why she was not out of bounds here. Yes, you could say she was taking for granted what God had done for her for the past couple of weeks and months in saving her life and her son's life. But I'm going to point out just how that missing element of the word of the Lord can make such a phenomenal, magnificent impact in the lives of those around you. Don't miss out on the Bible Track Echoes broadcast tomorrow. God bless. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.